Director Schulte? Here. Director Parrott? Here. Director Robinson? Here. And Director Crail from a long, long ways away? Here. I'm Director Rowan and I'm here. Next item is to approve the proposed agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to approve the proposed agenda. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number four, conflict of interest declaration. I have a conflict under the bill section. Imagine that. Anybody else? Okay, moving on. I'd like to welcome everyone, whether they're online or here in person. So next one will be communications and celebrations. I have invited Jared Carter, our new elementary principal, just so you can get eyes on him and for him to introduce himself next month, I'll bring my other principals back and we'll get back to a normal schedule. I said we'll wait till August for that. So go ahead. you can face whatever way you want. You face these guys. Hi, uh, my name is Jared Carter. I've been teaching for 10 years in the Clerk McManna Community School District. This will be my first year as principal. Um, my wife is going to be the school nurse at the middle school and the second or in the high school. And we have two boys that are going to be in first grade and second grade this year. So we're, we moved into town about two weeks ago and we're very excited to be here and small town it's like what we're from we're both from Williamsburg so about the same size and he's done a good job welcome, welcome for us so. thank welcome you. you nothing else underneath that public comment cards which we have none so consent items Make a motion to accept them. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the consent items. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number nine, designate depository banks. This is something we do on a yearly basis. We designate how much money we can put in each bank. I'm looking to see if there's a page for it. Teresa, does there 14. 14. If you look at page 14, it tells the limits um, that we can put in each one of them. One of them has to do with our bond. That's why that one's listed that way. It's something we had to add last year. I recommend you keep it the same and approve this. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to approve the list of depository banks. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Next item to appoint Secretary Treasurer for 2021. Secretary Treasurer in the past has been Teresa. I recommend that you keep this the same. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to appoint Teresa Sadler as the Secretary Treasurer for 2021. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry, Tracy. Okay, item number 11, appoint school attorney and chief negotiator for 2021. Uh, we have used Rick Engel for years. Um, I recommend that you keep this the same. So Second. It's been moved and second to appoint Rick Engel as our school attorney chief negotiator for 2021. Are there any questions or discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 12, our 2020 graduate list. 
If you go to page 15, you have a list of graduates. We were able to have a graduation ceremony um, on June 27th. It went very well. We had it outside. We stayed socially distanced. It was actually, other than being hot, it was it was a very nice event. I kind of liked it outside there. So um, we live streamed it. So I think everything went pretty well with that. Uh, these would be the graduates. No, graduates, I recommend that you approve them. So moved. Um, One of them turns into a second. So. It's been moved and seconded to approve the graduate list. Are there any questions or discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 13, purchases over 25,000. None at this time. Item number 14, return to learn update. Okay, this is the one that's going to take a little while. So we've got a few. First of all, I'll just give you a background on where we've been and what we've done so far. We've had meetings with uh, administrative team and a teacher team all along talking about what we can do to, to return to learn. That is kind of broken down from your district leadership team to individual schools that have put together plans of how one of three scenarios look. One, to go back to school one to do a hybrid model if you get kicked into that and, and then the last one if you have to go to all online so we are working on finalizing those the guidance from the uh, state is they expect you to return to school so we had a meeting with the superintendents public health and iowa specialty hospital doctors that are working with the corona um, and COVID 19 stuff we talked about what do we need to do to return to learn one of their recommendations, everybody there from the medical side said, we need to get the kids back in school. Although there's risk when you put kids back into a building, what they're missing on the flip side, they're missing more than the, the risk involved. So if we need to get them back into school, how do we do it as safe as possible? Um, with that, we talked about you need some type of face, face covering. Um, we discussed shields and masks. And coming out of that was the recommendation, especially for our district, that we would have all of our teachers wear masks and we would buy masks, or I'm sorry, shields, and we would buy shields for all the kids and highly recommend that they use them. The carrot for the horse with that is if you have a classroom and the kid is wearing a mask or the teacher is wearing a mask. So if we're all in the classroom and we're all wearing the mask, if John comes down with COVID, we are not quarantined for 14 days and we do not have to be tested because we have been protected. If I choose not to wear the mask and he comes down, now I'm quarantined because I have not had any type of protection on. Um, we are going to require it for teachers. If we have teachers that are unable to wear the mask that we provide, we will work with them to see what, and, and associates, any employee, including myself, we will see what we can get them with that. With students, we're going to highly recommend it. Um, we're going to encourage it. We're going to model it. Right now, the state's saying that you cannot mandate it. Um, we're going to do everything in our power to have them wear the mask, knowing that if they're wearing the mask and somebody comes down, your kid gets to still go to school. If Aaron's kid decides that he's not going to wear the mask or she's not going to wear the mask, we are going to call and say, do you know that your kid's refusing to wear the mask? Now it's on your hands because if your daughter gets sick, she's home for 14 days and you guys are going to have to educate her for 14 days or, or provide some type of services for her. So that's the short and the sweet of our plan. What we wanted to do was put together a unified letter from Wright County Public Health, uh, the hospital and the school districts to say, here is, here is what we wanna do so we're all on the same page and, and to share the resources. So I have, here is a public statement that is written for Eagle Grove. 95% of it is, and Tracy, I will email you a copy. 95% of it is um, the same language. The, the only difference is, is really where it says the Eagle Grove and how we do our school days with it. You will notice one thing on here, which I'm going to ask you to vote on to. Um, I will want this approved. I have the start date on August 24th. If you remember back when school was letting out, when we went back to May, there was a big push for summer school and a big push to start the school year early to make up for time lost. We worked with the association. The association agreed to switch some days so we could come back a week early. Now that we're actually getting there, no other schools are really doing it. 
and I have a fear that I, I would almost like the extra week to be able to make sure I get all the protective equipment in. Um, I also, right now your numbers aren't good. It gives you another week to hopefully let the numbers die down. And your actual school calendar does not start till the 24th. Those were additional days, but they did not count towards your school year and, and they, they were just additional days. I am going to make the recommendation that we move our start date back to what our original calendar was, was the 24th, just to give us time to get all of our ducks in a row. So when we start, we, we have a better chance of being successful. Um, I'm not gonna read you the letter word for word. You can do that. The main parts of it is in schools, you're not going to be able to follow the six foot rule. That is why we are providing the PPE what we will provide is a face shield. If a student or a teacher still wants to wear a mask, they're more than welcome to underneath. As long as you have one of the coverings, you are fine um, and you're protected. The, the recommendation is, or the, the guidance is, is if you're wearing that and you're within three feet, you're still probably pretty protected. We're going to spread out as much as possible, but there's situations that your distance is going to be hard to maintain. One of the advantages or one of the one of the things in education is to be able to do group work and learning from others and, and being able to learn to get along with people if you can't have school as normal as possible i'm not sure that you're doing great service to your students so by having the face shields by doing that type of stuff we will be able to do the group work um, one of the things they stressed is you do want to clean but don't do the overkill on the clean teach proper habits of Wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, don't face, touch your face, don't touch your nose, don't touch your eyes, those type of things. You're so much better off if you teach that and just practice smart hygiene and interaction than worrying about wiping everything down every second trying to get that out. Um, we will be able to offer busing. Um, it's going to have to look different. The one thing that we will do, and we had the meeting today and just talked about it, we're going to require mask if you get on the bus, um, or at least I'm asking you to require mask if you get on the bus. Because the bus, you are going to have to sit two to a seat in order to make it functionable. Um, you're gonna be by each other and, and you need to protect it so you're not spreading germs to others. The idea and the plan would be that when we stop at a bus stop, if you're wearing a mask, you can get on the bus. If you're not wearing a mask, you're not getting on the bus. We will offer masks to kids that need one, once you get a mask, it is yours and it's yours and your family's responsibility to keep it clean. We're not collecting them. We're not washing them. We're not doing any of that stuff. If you want to bring your own mask, you can. Um, if we have a student that gets on the bus, Darren's riding the bus and he refuses to wear the mask, we're going to call his parents and say that's his warning. He's not going to wear his mask. You've got to find a way to get him to school. We still will have parents that will choose to drive their kids to school and that's fine too because it's going to be safer in your own car than it is on a bus. The other part of that right now, when we run a 65 passenger bus, you may have 65 kids on. You're not going to be able to do that anymore. So what we're going to have to do is go to a stop, drop 30 kids off, go to the next stop, drop 30 kids off. So we're going to run multiple bus routes. We do not have the timing of that worked out yet. We will continue to work on that. But parents have to realize that their times are not going to be identical to last year. Their kids may get on the bus earlier. The kids may get on the bus later. They also may get home earlier or get later because when it comes to dismissal time, I may send six buses out at 3.15. And we talked about shortening our school day too. We may have to send three buses out at three o'clock. Those buses will drop kids off. They'll come back. They'll get another group. And your kid may not get home till 3.20. Um, pickup will be the same way. Some kids are going to get there probably at 7.35. Some kids aren't going to get there till 7.50. It's just a matter of how we can get the buses out and get back. Um, more than likely, we'll start on the other side of the highway or with the railroad tracks, so you don't have to worry about getting caught on the other side of the railroad track. I have a huge concern if you don't do busing about kids having to cross Highway 17. Um, that's a very busy highway. I would not want my kids to walk across it, so that's why we, we're going to work to see what we can do for busing and transportation for that. Um, physical distancing. We will spread out as much as possible. Um, we don't know what our class sizes are right now. We haven't had kids in the building since March 15th. We don't know if we've had kids or if we've lost kids. We will know more about that when registration comes. The way we made some changes the last time, if you remember the registration process, we're going to do that online. 
Lance, we will send out letters on that. We'll be back in the letters Thursday. Hopefully they'll go out Friday. Okay, so and next week that opens up, correct? It opens up uh, Friday morning. Okay, so we'll, we'll start getting a better idea as those numbers come through and we'll have more concrete stuff as we get to our August meeting. Uh, and when I say concrete, this is a very liquid situation, so things change all the time. So I guess I shouldn't use the word concrete. Um, Tracy said she got knocked off. So um, lunches, we are working on lunches. We have talked about hot lunches. We've talked about cold lunches. The lunchroom is a place where you have to remove headgear or you have to remove a mask and you sit closely. So one of the things we're talking about is the possibility of the first month, at least through September, of maybe doing a sack lunch in the rooms. We have two issues when you do that. One, it takes a lot longer to make a sack lunch than it does a plate of something in order to bag it and get it out. So we'll have to work through that. And two, when we started the summer, we did ham sandwiches, turkey sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Your suppliers are running out of that stuff, so you can't order it anymore. So. If, if we're going to do sack lunches, we have to find the materials in order to put it into it. Um, so, I mean, those we'll continue to work on those. Right now, though, I told I talked to Angie this morning and look at some type of breakfast bar, you know, something like that, where it's a grab and go breakfast where it can be eaten in the room and, and type of lunch. I would rather start tight and start loosening restrictions if we're having success than start it real loose and try to put the clamps on at that point or, or let something get out of control with this. Will students be allowed to bring their own lunch if they choose? Students can bring their own lunch, okay. yes. Yep. Um, Lance, you sat on Jared. Did I miss anything of huge importance right now with the plan to go back to school? All of this would be contingent on things are going well. If things stop going well, you may lose the high school, you may lose the middle school, you may lose the elementary if you have to shut down and go to some type of online learning. We have alternative plans for that. We have purchased a lot of technology and are still purchasing technology in case we have to go to that online type of model. Um, we've put additional hubs out to get broadband for our computers to the people. We bought it on buses so we can park buses in different places. Lance is still working with uh, Goldfield, like what is Goldfield's technology? Um, Goldfield, access. Goldfield access on what possibilities do we have to be able to put internet access out to the community, which would hook into our devices. Yours at home would hook, but this one here would hook into it because it's a school device. Um, how far, like, how close do they have to be to those hubs to get service? Lance, you want to answer that because it kind of depends on the, the hub. So as of right now, Goldfield Access has fiber bearing to AGP and Gold Eagle. Um, and Gold Eagle actually goes all the way up to the top of the elevator where the cell phone towers are. If, if it all worked out, what would happen is we would place a point to point or point to multi point tower radio up there and then send it out to different ones around town. So how close would you have to be to those within 300 feet? you could get to the, 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 the any device. And that's, we'd have to, have, the way we mapped it out on Google Maps is we'd have to have about seven in town and we could cover the vast majority of town. Once you're down to town level, it's hard getting through trees and houses and knowing exactly what it would be. But the neat thing would be if it can happen and if we can find the radios and if the cost isn't too prohibitive is we could actually have school Wi-Fi in town. It doesn't count for your rural students. It doesn't count for your students who, don't, you know, who live in other towns, but in Eagle Grove, we could actually have school Wi-Fi in your home. So you wouldn't have to leave your home to you be. You wouldn't have to leave your okay. home. That's, and that's the, that's the goal. goal. We're not there yet, but we're working on it. Uh, the second part is, as we've talked about within your parks in the community, different places like that where you can set up. You, and this was before we looked at the fiber type thing, but if, if you could set a bus or you could put a hotspot in a park to where I just know that I have to go to that location to work. Right now we have them at the, the U behind the high school. We've got them at the elementary. If you go to the parking lot there, we've got it out here. If you park a car up here, you can get onto it. Can we get more spots like that around town um, to where I know that if I need a consistent internet access, I can go sit in a park and sit at a table and be able to get something to work. In so, the middle of winter, you're going to do that? You can sit in your car. <laughs> so if, if you can park well, I'm there, just but, thinking, you know, you got to, I guess my thing is the logistics of that makes sense in that you are providing internet access for them. But when you're talking about K through four, K through four is going to look different. If you do a K four through four instruction and we've had it, 
you're not having eight hours of online instruction. They can't even handle it. Um, you know, you're looking at a half hour to an hour max. And so you've got to compact everything down. That's one reason we need to get the kids back in school mm -hmm. because especially with those younger kids, you need the face-to-face -face interaction. And there's so much more than just the book learning that you're given. If you want, we've, I mean, there's been online academies for the past 10 years. If you wanted your kid to get a high school education or an education without going to school, you could have done that. You can open and roll to one of those right now. The school setting offers different opportunities that some people feel valuable for their child. Um, it also, you know, we talked about at the high school level, how do you limit lunch? How do you limit the hallways? How do you limit that stuff? Some of that stuff's the only reason kids are going to school. Mm -hmm. I'll go to school so I can sit in the hallway to talk to you guys and I'll go to math so I can wait till the next period to when I can do it. So that is, I think if you're going to open it up, you have to open it up. You have to get as much stuff like the real school day as possible. Now it's not going to be the same if we're all wearing face masks and we're having to take a sack lunch, but we're going to offer as much, we're going to get as much normalcy as we can because that's what creates a school atmosphere. Like that. So. I'm not opposed to it. I just didn't. Yeah. No, I mean, th those are the challenges. Out there. Um, at the high school, because it's mandatory this year, you're going to have to, those are going to have to be addressed. I, I would not expect elementary kids to go sit in a park, but if you're taking a college class, you may have to go to a park and sit there for an hour in your car while you take the class. Or, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it just depends on what we have for availability for the internet. So if they're like an online class, is that like, I don't want to send my kid to school and he's going to go online. Is that just a CAN program that they're getting or is that our teachers have to provide that material? No, there's going to be two different models. We do not have the model completely worked out yet. We will send out a survey and, and this is my opinion on how this will look. We will send out a survey and the survey is pretty well going to say, do you plan on sending your kid back to school or do you feel more so you don't feel safe sending them to school and you want to keep them at home with resources from the school? The recess sources from the school are going to be the materials to teach, not the teacher. We will have one staff member in each building probably dedicated to check in on you to see what you need for the resources, but they're not going to be there teaching the reading and the math because, I mean, your grade spans are too much. My theory with a model like that would be if you want to send your kid back when you feel safe, you can send them back September 1st, October 1st, November 1st. That way we know when we might be getting more kids back and we can plan accordingly for it um, so, so you can do it a month at a time. At the high school, at the elementary and the middle school level, it's not as difficult because you're not trying to earn credit for graduation. At the high school level, if you choose to keep your child home, we will put you on an Odyssey Wear course, probably two or three. So you're working on a math, you're working on an English, you're working on a science. If you choose to come back to school, you're going to keep those courses because you have to finish them out for the semester and probably pick up some electives as you go through, but you can't. Or you just go through alternative schools where you can pick up a few more courses or just concentrate on finishing those. High school is where you have to be able to get the credits to stay on track to graduation. So, But I think you said during this, if I heard right, that if we do set up this network and stuff, the only computers are going to be school-issued computers that will be able to access yes. this network, which is important for the public to understand that our filters, our everything is going to be in control so that they can't just walk in with whatever. And yeah, there's no free Wi-Fi. Right. It would be, in fact, if I took my computer from home, I could not get on the, the network. I would have to take my school computer. And, okay. and that's an important part of it. So. so I guess what I am looking for is approval to put out this letter. I will give it to the press. If it's approved, I will give it to the press tomorrow. I will um, put it in an envelope. We'll mail it out to the families that we know. We'll just blast it wherever we can. And then the second part is, is to be able to move the official start date to the calendar. We're just going to get rid of the additional week of learning and go back to our original school calendar. But in reality, if we approve this letter as it's written. You can do both. That's in there. Yeah. Okay, so so yes, so you know that if you prove, approve this letter, our start date is the 24th, right. and we will follow our, it is our approved school calendar. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can, can I just ask, what was um, discussed on these face mask shields being distractions in the classroom? Okay, so 
Because I have two little ones. <laughs> there was there were several discussions on I'm that. I'm sorry, they are going to be a distraction. So, so part of the there, there was two different threads, and Jared sat in on the meeting with me because I just invited him, so sure. he could see it. Um, one is when you get to pre-K, K, and one, you're really little kids. How antsy are they going to be, and, and are, what are they going to be able to handle? The idea of a face shield versus a mask was that. A face shield is less distractive than a mask that's actually touching me and on my face. Okay. Um, the second part was they're seeing very few cases in children that age. Um, they're not seeming to transmit it. They're not they're asymptomatic if they do have it. Um, as of right now, until we get in, this is a test. You know, right. it's a test. But right now, they're not seeing big issues with it. So we had a conversation today, and on our leadership team as a kindergarten teacher and that was my question is what is the expectation of our kindergarten our preschool that type of stuff her answer and i was assuming that she'd say we can't wear them we have to do something different her answer was we will approach it like this is one of the expectations and if we model it um i think they'll get they'll be able to do it if you get to a situation where one kid won't wear it it's not required they don't have to wear it we just know what what happens if, if somebody tests positive with it the other thing is, is if, if you put it on for a, a half hour and you take it off and you teach without it, you're better off if you have some protection for an hour and a half during the day than no protection throughout the whole day. So know? that, so if like my daughter has it on, takes it off for a while, yep. puts it back on, and there's a positive in her class. She will have to be quarantined. She, had, she will have to be quarantined. Be, yep, because she had it off. I think that. When you get to those lower grades, I don't know where the cutoff is, but my guess is if one kid gets it in the class, you're quarantining the class. I can't even keep head lice out of those grades because they share the hat. Well, that's know? what I mean. And so so um, <laughs> I, I think that you're trying to pr you're trying to teach the hygiene, the social distancing, that type of stuff. But if somebody would test positive within it, it is a good chance that the class will be shut down. My hope is if the class gets quarantined. The teacher has their PPE on, so the teacher can still come to school every day and send out the lessons, and I don't have to give a sudden for the teacher. So, um, I mean, that we know that it's going to be difficult to keep those on. The other thing is, is if you get a middle school or a high school student that they want to practice their rights and they're stubborn and they're not going to wear it, they're not going to wear it. Right. I'm not going to sit there and try to fight them and right. disrupt the rest of the class to make it. We just know that if somebody's positive, that kid is out. Um, if it would hit those younger grades, there's a good chance you're going to pull a group out. So, so going for, obviously, in the great unknown that we live in right now, whose advice or recommendations are we going off of to remove those if okay. we get to that point? Yep. So we have, on that group, you have Dr. Michael McLaughlin, who's kind of running it from Iowa Specialty Hospital with the COVID stuff. You have Sandy McGrath from Public Health. You have a couple, Dr. Diamond was on it. You have a couple... Um, uh, Robin Paulson was on it. You have staff from the hospitals, which is Belmont and Clarence Hospital, but we're doing it right, countywide. Right. Um, and then you have the superintendent. So well, that was one of the questions that came up that said, if we're seeing rises, if we're doing this, that's the committee that's going to talk and, and walk through, you know, let, let's say the cases in Wright County get just terrible for a week. We may say countywide, we're shutting down for two weeks. And then we kick into one of our plans of here's how we're going to offer the education with it. Um, so that is the committee that, that we'll talk about. And Vicki Cooper was on it too, because she's the president of public health. So, we're, so it's keeping mainly Wright County. It's only Wright County. State level. It's well, I know, only Wright County. Well, the state we're, could come in too. State has said at the last, it was a while ago, their meeting, our expectation is that you go back to school, right. you will receive no further guidance. <laughs> that, I mean, that's what it was. So we've been planning to go back to school. from the president. You do that. Yeah, well, and... And he's saying go back to school. Right, right. So, okay. And most of the people want their children to go back to school. And if they don't, you're going to have kids that are going to have medical conditions where it's not logical for them right. to go back to Correct. school. We will work with them on an individual basis to see what we can do for educational needs. For them. That social interaction is going to be huge. Yep. Um, I just had a couple other questions that people had asked me about. Um, Sports, they're still following the high school association. Following the high school association rules right now. The, okay. the thing with sports, one, I'm, I'm hoping the high school association is going to give some guidance on it. The school districts are probably going to have to make a decision. One, if we're going to offer the sports. Two, if what we're going to do with spectators. 
if you would offer the sports under the current condition, I can't guarantee you'd have any spectators other than parents. I mean, you might really limit that down because I can control somewhat what the players are doing, but I can't control the crowds. And so just like with baseball and softball, you may limit it to parents only. Um, there was discussion amongst that board on, do we want to address sports at this time? And the answer was, you better get this information to kids because this is school and sports is a whole other piece that we have to worry about. Okay. And if a teacher were to test positive, are they required to use their PTO or is that, do they still fall under the... We have had conversations with, uh, those conversations started today just on how we're going to handle that. And it probably depends on the situation. Every teacher is given sick days. Mm -hmm. So if you if you use your sick days, you can get paid with it. What the question was is kind of where's the exposure coming from? If the exposure comes from school, if I'm sitting here and Darren has it and I get it, this is a, a work-related exposure we'll talk about that if i go to a graduation party and come down with it then i'm probably having to use my sick days and, and, and then if i run out i'm probably not getting paid so it's kind of going to be because i know when this all started with like with me if i had an employee that had to quarantine for a covid related illness or whatever i had to pay them i didn't have a choice mm -hmm. and they it. could not use pto yeah and now that's and kind did of, not have to and, and you may have employees that have either a health condition for themselves or a family member. And then we're gonna to have to get guidance on that. Because I, I I believe how the business world works right now is you pay me for 10 days and I use the sick days and then I go on FMLA leave. And and I don't know what the government program is for that, but it would not surprise me if we have people that are going to have a situation similar to that. Um, the idea of the mandatory face mask is to keep my teachers from being quarantined. Mm -hmm. If you would get, and I can't guarantee that you won't ever have to shut down because you don't have the teachers. Subs are hard to get. Um, 14 days with a substitute teacher is even harder because you want to get quality instruction in the subject area. And if you would have a situation where you had four or five teachers on quarantine, that would shut your school down and you'd have to go to an online. Because I can teach from quarantine. I can't mm -hmm. show up at school and be in front of the people. Uh, we have also, and I guess we're in the process of converting smaller rooms in each building and this office. So if I want to go in and teach a lesson online, I've got a quality camera, a quality microphone, and a quality setting in order to do that. Because when we were doing it before, some of our people, including the Tollivers, because we have poor internet access, we can't get anything down where we live. If I'm trying to broadcast out, it, it freezes and so forth. So I can come in, I can go into this little room, and I can have quality internet and quality setting in, in order to broadcast from. Um, Scott kind of said today, do we need a protocol that says this happens on this? I said, you can put that together, but every situation is a little bit different. So I would just assume when that happens, you sit down and discuss it and see what, what the situation is. I got one more on the mask. Yep. What about recess? Okay, so we talked about recess. The first way that came out was when we drop kids off at school in the morning. Are they better off going into a classroom and sitting or going outside and playing? Now, if I go outside and play, I'm mixed with everybody. If I sit in the classroom, I'm only mixed with a small group, so your exposure circle is less. There's pros and cons to both. The outside, you're in outside air, which lowers your risk, mm -hmm. okay? So if you're outside, it was kind of determined you might be better off outside because your risk is less with the fresh air. When we met today, one of the teachers said, you know, if you've got a mask on and I'm on playground equipment, do I have to worry about the safety of that mask kids? Yes, you do. So I think we're going to go when you go outside, you leave your mask inside and you're relying on fresh air. What we still have to realize is we can put in all the protections we want between eight and three, but you have kids walking in a group to school right. and at 315, you have kids joining a group and going to the park and playing. Right. So we're trying to provide a safe environment, but we also have to know that we aren't the end all and, and you know, they're mixing, already. They're, they're mixing yeah. already. So those conversations are still going on. Yeah. Um, we've talked about, do you split up classes? Do you split up time? How do you social? So we're having those conversations but right now and jared i think the idea is that they're not going to be wearing face masks outside isn't that kind of how you took it too yeah yeah okay. or face shield sorry tracy you're kind of outside here do you have any questions 
Uh, no, I lost you for a little bit, but I think I got most of it. So, and I had, um, I think the couple things I had before I had texted Jess. So I think I'm good. Okay. So what we're looking for is a motion to approve the distri distribution of this public statement. And I guess you could call it our resumption of school plan <clears throat> because it's got everything in there. So. I'll make that motion yes. with the uh, Monday, August 24th is our start date. Four kids. Four kids. It's been moved in second to approve this public statement for resumption of school. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 15, opening the weight room. Pass those down to you. Okay, so we asked Rich if he would put together a plan, and it actually is more than just opening the weight room. It is um, what we're doing with open gyms and that type of stuff. Um, here, if, if you read, read through this and it just says, feel free to share this with the board, here's kind of the plan that they're putting together with the facilities. Uh, the weight room, if people want to use the weight room, who has priority in the weight room? Um, the main thing is, is we're following Iowa High School Athletic Association and Girls Athletic Association requirements. Um, we're using disinfectant spray. We're limiting in the number of kids. You know, we're following the guidelines that you can to make this safe. Um, if you look through... You know, the locker rooms are off limits. The individuals bring their own water bottles. We're not going to be sharing the water bottles. We're not going to do that type of stuff. There's actually a tracking device. There's a spreadsheet that goes along with this. So I know if these 10 kids were here, who was there with me? So if, if this is my group and Darren comes down with it, I can say these were the five kids that were working out with them. Um, we've already had some of our teams start. So you have we have some experiences with it. With football, we've ran into situations where you've had kids with exposure, so we've kind of tried to work out the kinks with the exposure. Remember, there's a difference between an exposure or being positive. You know, that's the – you kind of got to figure out where the exposure is and what the risk is and how you handle that. So this is the – they had a coaches meeting. They talked about this, and this is what they came up with for the ideas. Um, if no one with an unknown exposure will participate for 14 days. So if you know that you've had an exposure, test, no test, whatever, you are out of the participation for a while. I would recommend that you approve this. So this schedule that he has mapped out, like for the different sports, that's like preseason or it's, right now it's or it's it... summer season yeah okay. you're open gyms and so forth okay. we don't want to step on each other's toes we right. have to do some scheduling usually what you'll have is basketball have open gyms volleyballs will have open gyms that right. type of stuff they're trying to schedule it to, to allow for cleaning and so forth okay. in a normal summer right now our weight room between you know 6 30 and 9 you, the weight room would be full of different kids coming in we've had to spread that out and kind of monitor and that type of stuff I'll make the motion to approve the weight room recommendations. Second. It's been moved and second to approve the recommendations for weight room in all sports. Are there any questions or discussion? Can I abstain since I'm not actually seeing the document? Yes. And all I right. will you both i'll email you this document after the meeting too okay i just won't vote though okay any other questions all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed and thank you for preparing these documents it's very valuable uh, item number 16, 28E agreement with Iowa Central. 28E agreement looks like this. Um, 
Does every, yeah, everybody has a copy of that. That is, we do it on a yearly basis as our classes that we take through Iowa Central. Um, it, it's the exact same, it hasn't changed. I would recommend that you approve that contract. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to approve the 28 e agreement with Iowa Central. Are there any questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, item number 17, North Central Consortium School Agreement. We do not have a copy of that at this point. They have not sent one, so I'm sure it will be back on next month. Okay. Item number 18, project update. Uh, we are still working on getting the bid proposals ready for the renovation of the upstairs here. Um, if you look, I guess you don't have it yet, so don't try to look. If you look at my evaluation packets, part of that is in there talking about the scope of work for upstairs and an estimated cost. We're thinking we can do it for under a million dollars. Um, that will allow us to put kids over here as the high school expands. We have the two big grades that are coming up. One is gonna be a freshman this year and, and next year's eight or next year's eighth grader is large. Um, that would allow us to use all the rooms upstairs for growth. And then if we choose to, if we need more room and choose to add onto this building, it's set up to have the system to, to feed into that. So, so you're, you're kind of doing some planning ahead. Right now they're still drawing the, plans architects are coming by and engineers so i don't have any plans for you we won't have to bond we'll use the um tiff money that we got from the county that's the money that i've set aside for this type of project and then it will open up additional rooms for us plan starting <sighs> kind of so on, yeah okay. it, 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 you got a six to eight week lead time to put together the bid packages they're getting close on those the hope is that we can do the construction the fall semester. So by Christmas time, we can open it up and put kids into gotcha. it. If you notice, there's a big dumpster out here to where we were cleaning out all the old stuff that was up there. Um, we still have some more to do to that. So we're getting it ready for it. But until you actually get the bid documents, take it to bid, you gotta see what the cost gotcha. is if, if we're gonna go through with it or not. I see that got half emptied out over the weekend. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> That's usually what happens. Yeah, there was pickup full. Yeah, so saved us some money. <laughs> Let's just put more stuff yeah. in. <laughs> okay, so no need on that. So item number 19, uh, approve the final reading of the policy book. Okay, so we've worked over the last few years on the policy book. The one question that we left open when we were going through it is what we wanted to do with early retirement. As it sits right now, Early retirement is a board decision. So we come back in November, we decide if we want to offer it or not. That is how it's written. So if you don't want to change that, then you just approve the, the policy as it's written right now. And then we can update and put our stuff on the online of our policy will match Iowa Associated School Boards. That would be my recommendation. It's worked well for us to evaluate where we are and what we need to do with the early retirement, if we want to offer it, we offer it. So my recommendation is, is that you approve the final reading of it, and then we can get that published and put online. So, and it does follow word for word Iowa Associated School Boards, what they recommend. Yeah. What have we typically done? I know last year we didn't offer early retirement. What has it been any every other year? But it, typically? It, varies. it varies. And if, if you have a need for it, you can raise the amount. On a normal year when we offered, it's $18,000 cash one time. One of my first years here when we were broke and we were broke, I think we bumped it up to 30,000 for a year and we got like 11 people to take it. So it, it gives you the flexibility to adjust it to, to what your need is. And right now it helps me from a planning standpoint. Sure. I know who's leaving earlier so I can advertise it. But from a financial standpoint, we haven't needed it. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to need it next year because you don't know what if we lost 15 kids, you're in money trouble. So then you got to offer it. So I, I that's why it, instead of having it in a policy of set, it's easier for me to bring a recommendation to say, here's what I think we need. We got you. Early retirement can both serve as a budget management tool, also as a personnel management tool. There may be times when 
we need all the teachers we can get and we don't think we're going to find any more that we may not want to offer it because we can't we, stay we can't find these yeah. teachers so it's it really does more than one thing but uh, once we get through our negotiations we know where the budget is then we have an idea of what we can do that's part of the reason we've a multi-year contacts is because we know what that's going to be for mm -hmm. the next year so uh, it really has worked very well the way it's been uh, if you put it in the policy then it it can be yeah it can become hey, here's what's what is a misunderstanding early retirement is a benefit for the board and the district not for the teacher the board and the district is offering it to balance your budget or to find out where your staffing is um, you'll have people say well it's not enough or it should be this it's not a benefit to the employee it, it works as a benefit if they sign up for it but the the idea of it is to help the board and the school district the manage money not to be a benefit that's that's granted to the employee it, it used to be um, that if you offered it two consecutive years it set precedent and then you were locked into it when chapter 20 changed a couple years ago that is no longer the case so in the past at times we had to also evaluate hey we, just, we don't want to set up this precedent so but now that no longer exists or it could come back but it right at now, the current it, time it does not exist. it does not so that one is not something we consider but if we put it in to the policy then it's a lot tougher to say no say no so yeah. it, it really has worked well this way and at the same time like just said we each year is separate we have offered this dollar figure uh we may not want to offer that much or we may want to offer more again if we don't have it in here then we're free to do any adjustments that we want to every time so the the way it's been in the past has worked very well for the district and i would agree i think that's probably a good way for the district to exist so I'll move to keep it the same. Second. Okay, what, what you're really moving then is to approve the final reading of the policy board. Policy board, yep. Okay. That's what I thought you were. Yep. It's been moved and second to approve the final reading of the policy. Whoop. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Item number 20, evaluation material. This is what the goals, this is me now, okay? So this is the goals that we set at the beginning of the year and what we've done with those goals. And Tracy, I will email you that as well. Past practices been, I present you with this, then I will email you out a copy of this with a place for you to determine if the goal has been met or not, and then if you want to put any comments. Do you then turn that into Teresa? Tell me if I'm right here on Teresa. Teresa. You turn that into Teresa, Tracy, or this vice president has put them together, who was Aaron, so I'm guessing that will be Tracy now, and then they... I think it was because Aaron was on the committee. Wasn't what? she on the, that committee? Um, uh, no, I don't think so. I think it was Aaron liked to do it. I think it's a really good idea. Okay. The vice president continues to do it. Okay, that's fine. I just thought she was more because it was the committee. Thing. No, it's because the president and vice president are the ones that actually talk to the superintendent after we do the summary of that stuff. So that's why it needs to go to either myself or you. All right. And I think you're a lot more efficient than I am. So, <laughs> and, and really, you don't have to put any comments. You just have the information to share with me. Summarize. And then, yep, then it's summary. And then I set up a meeting with John or with John and you, depending on your schedule. We go through your, your goals, what you did to meet them, and start talking about when you look into the future, what type of goals or, or what you need. I work for you. You guys tell me what you want. Um, this is the process that we put that together. So... Do we need to set up, a, because we don't have the other material inside of it, um, do we need to set up a time 
frame so that this doesn't carry on forever. Yes, yeah, usually we say by this date you bring it back and you. Okay, so we got another month till the next meeting. So if we have them brought back for that meeting before that meeting, not that we're going to deal with it at the meeting, but that would be adequate for you. And yeah, this is your time frame. Usually in, I want to say it's October, we set a date to set the goals for the next year. So you want to have this wrapped up and sometimes they carry on to where you have this right. and you see what continues over the next year. And for the people that are new here, when you get this, it's going to have places for you to comment on what has happened in the past, but it also has some space for you to uh, recommend things that could have been done or questions, comments, questions, concerns, anything, anything like that. So it's kind of an open document and, uh, Tracy and I will summarize it and then present it to Jess. And uh, but it, it's a it's really a working document so that you know if you want things done. And then when we do set goals in October, that's your chance to say, okay, I like this from before, but I think maybe we should work on this thing, whatever it is. And obviously, this year it can be involving this virus, the way we're handling things or things like that. But, this is your opportunity to critique and to, uh, and compliments are good, you know, saying good job doing it this way. Maybe you, have you considered doing this? Uh, that all is valuable, so. And there's actually, I just, when I pick this up, this is lighter than I want. I have the documentation that goes around with the planning of the school type of stuff. I've got it printed off. It's not on this. I must not have ran it through. Darren was talking to me. He's trying to put it together. So I will get you that tonight because you don't want. That's going to be hard to get in an email and look at because it's it's about this thick. So before you leave, I will run a copy of that and, and get it to you. So once you receive the materials and work on it, and by next meeting bring it with you or give it to Teresa, whatever works. And then uh, we will summarize it. And after that, uh, Tracy and I will talk to Jess and go over it. So uh, this, I don't think we need a motion for. This is just no. standard. We are we are required by law to evaluate the superintendent. That is mm -hmm. one of the statutory demands of the board. So okay, item number twenty one: board member reports. I have nothing. Nope. Just tons of questions about yep. what we discussed tonight. Sorry, I'm boring. I don't have my mentor, so. Okay, 22, superintendent's report. Most of it is preparing for the next school year. I will, I've already, with this letter, I will get a copy to Kim so we can get it in the paper. We will get it so we can mail it out to the patrons. We'll get it as many places as we can now, kind of given our plan. Um, I know people want information on it. So now that we've had board approval on it, we can start sharing that information of, of when our start date is, what we're going to do to keep your kids safe and ordering the equipment. The one thing I stress is it's fluid. So if your cases do something funny, it makes a difference. My biggest fear is that you get a back order on face shields for teachers. If you don't have face shields for teachers, you're not starting school on the 24th. If you don't have face shields for kids, you can do masks, which I think we can make work. Um, you might be able to do masks for teachers, but they're not as safe. So if, if you're missing one of the key components, it's going to make it hard to start school. And then you're going to be doing something online. So that's why we're going to start ordering. We've already started talking about getting the stuff now. So if you've got a four-week layout, you're okay with it. That's what I was going to say is I think, I mean, with everybody looking at the same stuff, what are we going to look at for masks? We will have masks ordered by the end of this week. So the supplier that I talked to today indicated that at least in one of the instances they had over ten thousand in inventory. So if that could take, but if, if if we're ordering two hundred, it doesn't take a lot. You know, that's no, what I mean. That's it doesn't. But that was why when Jess and I talked this morning, we pursued it, and uh, he's got all the contact information, so he can go on from there. But uh, you know. We, we can't just leave it late for a week. We're going to. No, we, by the end of this week, we're hoping to get the PPE equipment for face shields and that stuff. Ordered. We checked on um, stations for hand sanitizer. Right now, our supplier doesn't have any. We've got the hand sanitizer. We can't get more stations. So now we're doing an inventory of what we have for stations. 
to see what you can do to go around and put it. I know that when I take my kids through a hospital, every single one of those things, they stop and they put their hand under because they like to do it. My question is, is if you have a, a sanitation station there, is it going to run out every recess where <laughs> kids are just going to keep doing it? So we have to figure out how to ration our supplies to it and, and to, to do that. One of the questions was, if you like on the bus, can you do disposable masks? You know, kid puts it on when they get on, they throw it away and you don't have to worry about it. That's OK. But if those masks are. Ten dollars for fifty. You're gonna go through four hundred a day. You're gonna spend a lot of they're money. That's what it's for a route. Yeah. What's that? They're a little more than that. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna spend a lot of money in a hurry. They're and, like over a buck a piece. Okay, and so I mean, that'd be four hundred each route. So you're talking eight hundred a day. It's not practical. Um, with wipes, when we're talking about cleaning the mask, the idea would be is if the kid has the mask, they can wipe it off. They can throw the 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 wipe away, put the mask down. It's ready for the next day. If there's only 300 wipes on a can, how many cans can you get and how fast is that going to add up versus can we get a spray to where we spray them and you wipe it down with a cloth and you put the cloth back in your desk or something like that. So we still have to worry on or work on those. The other side that nobody thinks about but me when I'm trying to sleep is if you've got a bunch of disposable stuff, how many, how, what do I got to do with garbage? You know, if everybody's doing a wipe, you've just filled up 15 more bags of garbage bags. I don't have that type of room. So the logistics we're still working on. That's is all. There, is there enough laundry if you do like okay, a so in a rag and then that, that that is my concern with masks. If you wear a mask, so if I have a mask and I have every kid throw them in a bucket as they leave, who wants to wash that bucket? Correct. You know, first of all, do I have the industrial laundry? If I use my household laundry, we'll burn it up in no in way. a week. So you have to have a ten thousand dollar washer and dryer for an industrial thing. That job is not a good job because you're touching every single kid's, you know, mask that they have right here. I thought you said, though, if the kid needs a mask, you would provide one. I will provide it. They're taking it home. Yes. To yeah. be no, I meant like the face shields. Like if you sp spray them down and wipe with rags and wash those rags. That's, that, that's kind of my idea. Okay. Is it, and, and Rather than I need to get more information on it, but paper towels are cheaper. So yeah. if I squirt it and use a paper towel, then I can throw it away and have to worry about the garbage site. If I squirt it and I wipe it with a disinfectant, is that rag disinfected? Because it's got the disinfectant on it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that's kind of what we have to look at is, gotcha. is what is logical. Because if I'm the only one touching it, my rag, my desk, my rag, my desk, I don't have to worry about other people. It's when you start throwing stuff in a bucket that I don't know what I get. Gotcha. So. But if that person and your wife the same way, my wife has touched 100 COVID patients a day mm -hmm. or tests. And as long as you have your PPE on, those people are getting sick. You should be all right. And, and that's the idea is if my teachers are wearing the face, the face shield and they can wear a mask if they want, their distance is so much more than their doctors that are seeing the patients that are coming Correct. in or testing positive. Correct. So any other questions or comments for me? It will be a very busy six weeks to school, and I think the first four months of the school year are going to be a blur learning as we go. Not that this should matter. What do you what do you expect, or how is this going to affect financially to buy all this stuff? Okay, so we get one hundred and sixty thousand dollars for COVID stuff. We've put fifty thousand aside for technology. Lance, that's Lance's budget. Okay, we put fifty thousand dollars aside for cleaning, um, safety devices, that type of stuff. And then we put $50,000 aside for staff. I think we'll go over in each category, sure. but it helps a lot to have that. Yeah. When, that's, we did that's the, what I was... when we did the electrostatic cleaner that you spray on and it crawls across the surfaces at night, that was $7,000 to order that. So that comes off your $50,000. When we order the face shields, you are going to be at six thousand to seven thousand dollars for the face shields. That's for the teachers. Right. Kids are going to be another two to three thousand on top of that. Um, if you get to where you're spending seventy thousand in each category, it's going to get a little tight. That's right. Um, I mean, you, you, in, in any school budget, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. The two keys with that is if you look, I went 50, 50, 50. I have a ten thousand dollar cushion for one of those categories that goes over. Um, 
The other side for staffing, and I'm hoping that the PPE equipment will keep this. My biggest fear was you go down with COVID or quarantine and I'm paying you and a sub for 14 days. That will eat your budget up in a hurry and you're double paying. Um, if I can keep my teachers from having to take time off, it saves the budget a lot. Um, you also have some, I mean, the bus drivers. I'm going to have to pay my bus drivers more because they're going to be driving extra routes. I'm going to have to pay my associates more because they're going to show up earlier in the morning and leave later at night because we have to get the kids there. I may have to pay the cooks more, hire more cooks because we have to stuff the lunches. So all of that is what that third pot is there for too. And you're going to have to, I mean, really, I don't, I don't care, but it's, it, it's going the to financial be financial side of the a puzzle you have to put together where it could get you is if our enrollment drops 15 kids, then it makes next year really tough because you're going in a hole this year and you don't have the money to come back. For next year, so how do kids that like parents who don't want to send their kids back and are using an online learning system, how does that affect our If they are using our materials, I can keep them on my enrollment with the idea that they're going to come back, but we have to identify those kids and get them on the count because if they're not on my count, I'm not going to get funding for them. Now, okay. if you homeschool your kid, I don't get any funding for it. But if you're doing the, we'll call it the hybrid model or the thing where we're supporting you, I can keep you on my count knowing that you're coming back in November and I have the money for you. But it's going to be important from our side to know who those kids are so we're not missing anything. And provide everything. And provide everything to them. I mean, we, we've got a cost to go to yep. them. So. If someone chooses that hybrid model, that work is mandatory. Those it's, kids it is have mandatory. to do that work. Yes. And they have to well, be submitting it or turning it no, in no. or something. Well, that only way you do the hybrid is if we as a district go to hybrid. If you choose to keep your kid home at the beginning of the year, you're responsible for the education. We're providing you the materials. You're responsible for the education. There's no mandate. If you don't do anything, you don't do anything. But, but, that's then only how do you, but then how does how is that assessed when it comes time to move ahead next year? We got to catch them up when they come back. But that's the same as any homeschool. If you would pull your kids out right now and homeschool them, when they come back, we ask what age they are, and we try to get them into a grade and catch them up. So um, the difference is, is we will supply more supports, but we can't be the teacher because you're. Well, we need to know what how many kids we have. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got twenty percent of your population that's doing it, it's actually going to free up some of my staff, and I can offer more supports. If you've got five or six kids doing it, I've got staff, I can do it. it you know, there, it, mm -hmm. it just depends on what the spread is with it. But the idea is, is if you're keeping your kid home, you're going to be responsible for a majority of their educational progress. Because I can't, well, when Jared asked the question, can should we end school an hour early so the teachers can go and then work with kids on the online version? I don't think you're gonna have that many kids that are staying home. I can't have 800 kids lose an hour of education to serve 10 kids. Mm -hmm. And so do we have to find another way to That's why we've got to get that. And basically, if you were to choose to have your kid receive online instruction, you're doing you're committing to a month, essentially. Isn't that what you said? For for the kids that if you choose to keep your kid home to see how it works out, you know, because you're, you're scared to put them back. Yes, you, you're committed to the the first one's short because August isn't very much. Right. September, October, November. Okay. And the reason you do that is for a planning purpose, right. so I don't get three kids that come in one day or, and you can pull out on the same thing too. I, it, it's getting bad out there. I'm going to pull my kids out for a month. I'll give you the resources, you get the same resources they get. You work with them at home for a month. And if things are better, you bring them back the next month, but it, it's just to keep kids from bouncing in and out. Right. Any other questions? Welcome to adjourn. Second. It's been moved, second to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. I'm going to go get that copy of the.